it is Chrissy. And it's Lynn. <laughs> and we're from the Chattanooga Public Library. And today is December 21st, which means it is winter solstice. So for today's program, um, it's going to be our second installment of Holidays Around the World. So Lynn, could you give a brief description, explanation about what winter solstice is? So the astronomical, like scientific designation of the winter solstice is that it is when the Earth's tilt is the farthest away from the sun. So as you may know, the Earth is all kind of tilty like that. And at the winter solstice is when the day is the shortest and the night is the, the night is the longest because we're the farthest away from the sun. I like that scientific explanation. Um, we're not going to be doing science today, kids. <laughs> but the reason that the scientific part is important is because the, the length of the day and the length of the night are measurable scientific data points that have affected humans and affect plants and all of the things that live as part of our natural world. So the amount of sun that somebody gets affects their moods and their life and the way that their crops grow. So it is something that humans have paid attention to as long as humans have been. I love that. So for today's video, we are actually going to be doing two DIY crafts that are inspired by different celebrations people have cultivated over the years to celebrate the winter solstice. So Lynn is going to lead one and I'm going to lead one. We're going to go over the supplies, the instructions, and by the end you'll have two amazing crafts that are winter solstice inspired. So Lynn, you ready? Yep. All right, let's go. We're going to start our DIY crafts off today with some holiday decor for our wall. And so these are going to be natural wall hangings and most of the things on our wall hangings are going to be found in nature. Um, so a couple of the things we don't have around here, so I might have purchased them, but most of them I forged around here in Chattanooga. So just starting off, I have a branch from a magnolia tree. It's super bendy, and so that's gonna help. But if you don't have a magnolia tree, you can just use like a hoop. You can use a branch that is bendy. It's up to you. I also have some evergreens. I have a pine cone some holly with some berries on it. Um, I do have some hay that I purchased from a craft store. Hey, hey. Um, and then I've got some florist wire that will help us with the construction and then also some fishing line. All right, so these are all of our supplies and let's go ahead and start with the instruction. And then we're also gonna talk about why we are using these certain elements. Yay. So we're gonna start off with our magnolia branch. We're going to make a loop out of it. So what I'm going to try to do is wrap the branch around itself, but if that doesn't work, then you can also super secure it with your floral wire. So while I work on doing this, we're going to talk about why we are using all of these different elements. So we are starting off with a magnolia branch because magnolia falls under the evergreen family, which means that it stays green in the winter. And so um, evergreens happen to be symbols of protection, prosperity, and continuity of life. Now continuity, that is a pretty big word. Dr. Hunter, would you like to explain precisely what continuity means? It's ongoing, right? It's the circle of life, so to speak, that in the darkness of the winter when most things are brown and dead and have lost their leaves, Particularly here in the south, we have things like magnolias, and the further south you go, you may run into live oaks, and those are called live oaks because they're always green. Um, they have a really short dormant period, so to speak, which is when the leaves would fall or whatever, and so they always look alive, even if, you know, they aren't flowering or, you know, trying to drop seeds or anything, so, um, and it helps us remember that there is you know, life even in the middle of dark times. Also, the shape of a ring. There's so many different symbols that can be taken from the circle from a ring, but it usually also follows in line with continuity. You know, it's never ending, it's consistent, it's constant. So that's why we are making our face out of evergreen and as a ring. So I actually think that I might hang it up with the magnolia leaves at the top, but it's up to you. Like you could put it to the side, but you know, you do need a little bit of space uh, to 
hang the rest of your natural elements from. So next step is just going to be figuring out where you're going to place the other elements. So before we kind of get to like the design, and I'm going to grab all of my other supplies. And so the first thing that I think that we should do is just go ahead and grab some of the fishing line. I would take like maybe arm lengths and cut it off. And you're gonna go ahead and tie one end of your fishing line to around the base of each material. I would do a double knot. I would do a triple knot. <laughs> I would make sure that it is super, super secure in whatever way makes you feel confident. So <laughs> while we work on tying all of our fishing line <laughs> around all of our elements, we're gonna talk about what each one of them means. You know, we've already talked about evergreen and what that means and represents. So I have a little sprig here of, I think this is like a balsam fir, Douglas fir. It could be a spruce. It could be a spruce. Let's do some other evergreens around here. We've got pine, we've got fir, we've got cedar, juniper, spruce, all those different types of trees. And as I said before with the magnolia, it represents protection, prosperity, and continuity of life. All right. So then we have some holly and some berries here. So this is another symbol of protection, but it is also a symbol of good luck. It is a symbol of the waning sun. I don't know if you've all noticed recently, but the sun has been going down around five o'clock in the afternoon and it is hurting my soul. And so I need my holly to not only represent the waning sun, but also protect me from my heart and soul. And then also holly does represent the old solar new year. And so it's kind of a symbol of times to come, we're looking to the future, let's leave 2020 in the past, bye. Then we also have our wood element. So I'm going to be using a pine cone, but you could use any other kind of wood natural elements. It could be bark, it could be a branch, you could use an acorn. Um, ooh, like a wood chip? Um, a wood chip would be beautiful. Yes. The wooden elements represents the new solar year. Hello 2021, we're ready for you. It also represents endurance, strength, triumph, once again, protection. We need all the protection we can we can get. And then also it is a symbol of good luck. And I think that we all could use that in 2021. Now I will say with the pine cone, I'm just kind of looping my fishing wire around it and through it. Um, I'm trying to be gentle. I just lost a couple of pieces. Hopefully that's not a symbol of something. <laughs> so you are not attaching these to your wreath yet. Nope. I am just getting everything prepared. Um, you know, when you're talking about the wood, one of the big things about all of the solstice celebrations and all kinds of different cultures is fire. Yes. <laughs> and one of the easiest <laughs> ways to get a fire <laughs> is to burn some wood. I think that is part of the connection to light and hope. When you put your string on your fishing line on your hay, um, did you put it in the feathery part or on the stick part? On the stick part, so it kind of looks like a broom, but you can do either one. But speaking of the hay, <laughs> wheat is a symbol of sustenance, but also abundance. So hopefully whenever the crop comes up, there is an abundance of wheat for our sustenance. For our sustenance. It is also, once again, a symbol of good luck. I don't know if y'all have caught on to the theme here, but there's a theme. <laughs> there's a theme. What might it be? Another that I did not grab that is pretty popular in Chattanooga would be ivy. And ivy can represent, once again, protection. But I'm really wishing I grabbed some ivy because it can also represent healing, victory, honor, and any guesses, good luck. All right, so I have all of my uh, different supplies. They have their fishing line tied around them. And so now we are going to attach it to our ring. You know, you kind of get to use your creativity. You can make them at different lengths. You could make them all the same length. You can make it however you want to make it. But I want to encourage you while you do this, to really think about what each piece means and symbolizes and really take the time to you know put them in an order that means something to you and think about all of the things for the future 
but also think about the things that have happened this year. You know, this is how we are really going to find ways to celebrate a really hard year, but also leave it in the past and move to the future of year, which will be better. I promise. I would also recommend if you have any other family members that are interested in doing this, go out and forge together. Do this process together. You can make one big ring or you can make, you know, each of your own, but this should be something that you do with your family and want to celebrate this year, this holiday, and this time together. So I'm going to go ahead and attach all of mine. Lynn's going to attach all of hers. We're just tying our strings on. That's how we're attaching. Yep, just tie them on. I think that I'm going to attach mine just and let it hang down kind of like this and have them hang like down. Like a mobile? And have them hang down from different lengths and then I'll just hang it up on my wall. All right, we're all done. So we are ready to show ours. So this was my interpretation. Um, so I have my loop and then I've got my different elements hanging down and it's gonna look awesome on the wall, but you can't see it because this is a green glitter wall. Mine is less like a mobile and more like a wreath with a little surprise in the center of it. All of my it. things are hanging down. I love that. It is just as fascinating as your fascinator. My fascinator. This is the first craft and let's move on to the second. So the craft that we're gonna do with me leading it is going to be a little light up canvas situation to help you remember that there's always light and darkness. Um, we talked a little bit about the symbolic um, importance of light at this time of year. So as some of you may have felt a little sad about not being able to do the kind of normally going to practice traditions that you might have with lots of friends and families, um, family members this Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday season will maybe help you give, give you something to look at and think about how there's always light um, in darkness and there's something for us to hope for. So I'm going to make a snowflake because <laughs> I like the idea of the sort of points that the lights might be part of. And I just found a notepad really because I just needed a, a straight edge. So <laughs> I'm just using the side of my notepad here and I'm taking a pencil and I'm drawing it on the front side of my can canvas here. I should have flipped over my little canvas so you could, what it looks like on the back, it's mm -hmm, just a little canvas. So anyway, back to it. Mine's a little off center. Guess what? Not a big deal. <laughs> so we'll just make a plus sign, essentially. This is pretending math. Draw that. And then I'm going to turn it sideways a little and draw another kind of plus sign, but with slightly shorter arms. You guys know what a snowflake looks like. Um, okay, so one of the other things that, you know, the snowflake was making me think of actually is the um, cold weather that we have at this time of year, if you're in the northern hemisphere and moving up towards the Arctic Circle, is that um, the weather being cold like that means that the, the crops will not be growing, right? We all know that, that winter is when the crops are not uh, growing any longer. And that means that in, you know, less prosperous and um, scientifically advanced times, our ancestors had to really worry about making it through the winter um, with enough food. So one of the things that would happen because they had to consider weighing the costs of feeding members of the herd, right, the cows that they had or the goats or whatever animals that was they were raising, um, the amount of food it would take to feed them during the winter or whether or not they could help be food for the family or the community. So at this time of year, in generations past, there would be big parties where they would slaughter the animals and there would be suddenly an abundance of fresh meat, which you would need fire to cook and would be a cause for a party. So that's another reason that family and food and light and fire are important at this time of the year because it would be when we would hide from the dark in our gatherings and kind of snuggle up, eat some food, sit around the fire, and hide from the snow. Okay, so we're going to start poking holes. I have this exacto knife. I'm doing kind of a starburst, which is a kind of looks like, right. like as well. But whenever I poke my lights through, it'll obviously look a little different. So I actually made like target holes to, for myself to poke. But yes. You were correct. Go ahead and start poking holes whenever, and then I will stop talking. And there are lots of food and family-oriented traditions around this time of the year from all over the world. 
And some of them are based on old stories and some of them are new traditions that people have just decided to start on because they were, they sounded fun. <laughs> and so um, one of the um, old traditions that became, an, it was actually an old and kind of, I guess, newer tradition um, in Scandinavia where polar night is when it stays dark for 24 hours. And it happens in, a, um, in an area, as I'm using my hands, you can't really, you can see them here, um, the area in the Arctic, ar around the Arctic Circle and not too far down from that. And it, it's part of uh, Russia, part of Greenland, and part of Canada. It doesn't just stay dark for 24 hours on the surface. It can be months, like from the higher you get towards the North Pole, it can be from November to January, which is a really long time to not see the sun. So you can imagine that the fear of the dark never going away, <laughs> just emotionally, you would be ready, ready, ready to start thinking about things that made you feel warm again, right? <laughs> so, in, in olden days in Scandinavia, the solstice marked sort of a midpoint between the beginning of the dark days and the end of the dark days, mid-December day, um, marked sort of the halfway point of that. And they knew that once they hit that halfway point, they were over the hump, so to speak, right? So part of the tradition would be to go and burn, get big, big logs to burn. Um, they called those the Yule logs and they would burn for days, like 12 days. <laughs> and so that would be sort of the center of the community at that time so that they could be together and think about better days ahead. And that the sparks from that fire was a, you know, a wish or a hope or a blessing for the, the future um, warmer days. And then Scandinavia also, the um, countries there decided that uh, they were loved that tradition, I suppose, so much culturally that they merged it with the Christian Saint Day for Saint Lucia. And so that you may have seen pictures of, there are lots of children's books that describe that, where they um, dress up as Saint Lucia and have candles, a wreath of candles around their head to represent the light. The um, story of Saint Lucia is, she was a Christian martyr and um, the girls dress up in white gowns and red sashes and wear wreaths of candles on their head in honor of St. Lucia as an homage to the candles she wore on her head to light her way as she visited imprisoned Christians carrying forbidden food in her arms. So it's a food holiday, a light holiday, a helping others holiday, and it got brought together with another tradition so that they get to celebrate all of it at once. And my other one that I learned about that I didn't know about that had to do with North American, Native American traditions, um, was that the Hopi tribe celebrates a holiday called so Soyal. The indigenous Hopi people of Northern Arizona, they celebrate winter solstice as part of their religious tradition with um, Kachina, which are the spirits representing the natural world. And so the sun is wel uh, welcomed back to summer for, with ritual dances. And so there are prayer sticks and dolls that are made in preparation for the tradition and they have, you know, a big party with dancing. Um, and again, it is an acknowledgement of the dark days, the triumph of light over darkness and that the dark days are on their way out. So that I think is the big message of hope buried in the winter solstice is that, you know, it might be dark now. We might miss all our friends and family. <laughs> we miss you at the library, <laughs> but we know that the, the lighter days are coming and we'll all be together again soon. Again, like a kind of community tradition mm -hmm. that doesn't, um, that doesn't ignore the fact that everybody's going to be sad <laughs> because it's the end of the year. But creates an opportunity for everybody to be together and think about light and hope. I just turned it over and started poking through seeing what happened. Just my holes seem to be able to fit like if they don't fit right away if I'm careful and I put my fingers on either side and sort of push through uh -huh. I can get it. So that one just popped out. Yeah! A bajillion to go. <laughs> I know right? So you were just talking about getting some tape and when I turned it over I had that happen where it came they came out but this reminds me of light bright oh my gosh this is literally light bright i love it here's the beginning of mine <laughs> it's so cute oh there's mine my little oh that looks good uh, arm of, of a snowflake and it's going to take us a little while so what we're gonna do is go ahead and finish these <laughs> <laughs> when we're not on camera, we're going to finish them at home, but we will show our pictures of our finished products as soon as we get them done. This is definitely not a three-minute DIY. <laughs> but I'm so, super excited. It looks cool, and I'm excited to hang it up as well. So I'm 
absolutely loving the start of our DIY crafts and we're going to finish those up and then take some pictures and put them at the end of this video. So I hope that y'all have enjoyed and also if you do these crafts, please take pictures and share them on our Facebook or Instagram. We would absolutely love to see them. So thank you so much and a uh, happy winter solstice to all of you out there and we will see you next time. I was just going to say I hope that your days may be short but full of light. Bye! <laughs>